Where was it? But I'm, I'm not going to like explain the whole story. It was, it was in it was in Santon. Santon, yeah. yeah. It was in Santon. Are you like, Ricky Rick at this time, or are you just under um are you a SoundCloud rapper or something? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would say I was becoming Ricky Rick. Okay, becoming Ricky. So I've always been Ricky Rick. You have to understand. After I left school, yeah, I've always been Ricky Rick. Like Les, the way, when Les and them gave me the name, Les gave me the name. The alias. The alias. You yeah. know, first it, I used to be pretty Ricky around the streets in Joburg when I came from from school. And I came to Joburg back, I became Pretty Ricky. And the streets knew me as Pretty Ricky. Yeah. And then after a while, I developed into Ricky Rick. Yeah. But I was always that character in the streets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, not necessarily on TV and everywhere else, but I've always been Ricky Rick on the streets. Podcast and chill. Matt G, the ghost lady, and Len Moleko. Hinda, Varmen, hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to it. It's another episode of Podcast and Chill. Hang out with Ricky Rick. Yes. AKA Cotton Eater, AKA Bozonke, AKA the father of the youth. Am I missing anything, bro? I think you pretty much covered everything, yeah? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for having me at your house, man. What a beautiful house, bro. Yes, thank you, man. Uh, you're living lavish, man. Thank you. Make me want to rap, dude. I should have been a rapper, bro. Hey, it's deeper <laughs> than rap. <laughs> Which DJ do you know that lives like this, bro? I think a lot. I mean, everyone's living nice now. Like, but uh, yeah. I think like whether I rapped or whether I did something or whether I had money or not, like I was always going to try to live nice. Like yeah. I just got like a certain taste level yeah. where I need things to be a certain way. I was always going to make a plan somehow. And I was just saying, you're OCD, man. I didn't think you would be OCD, bro. Yeah, he called me OCD. <laughs> so, hey, listen, dude. I, I think we see each other. Uh, 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 vendor people always having me for dragging, because uh, I sometimes butcher my own language. Mm -hmm. But it's nice to uh, chat to someone who's less vendor than me. <laughs> <laughs> you can't even speak vendor, bro. It's so messed up, because like, I go to like, I go to the checkers or whatever. Yeah. And like, they know I can't speak vendor. <laughs> And you just hear the lady go, now hit me with the 15, <laughs> 15 sentence. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I'm like, uh, I'm like, ah, you don't speak Venda. Yeah. But she knew I don't speak Venda. So I feel like the universe is also pulling me closer to Venda people in my daily life yeah. to tell me I need to actually start learning my language. Right let, let me teach you some Venda. Uh, maybe you can put it in your next rap or something. Okay. Say, Ndinyago uh, Nitaba. Eh? Ndinyago Nitaba. Ndinyago Nitaba. Ndi? Ndi? Nyago. Nyago. Nitaba. Nitaba. Yeah. What's that? Says like hello. Okay, okay. No, I'm kidding. No, that says like, that's, that's like, I'm scared of, I'm not scared. What? Okay, but I'm sharp. I want to rock you. <laughs> See, that's why I don't be trying to learn from these guys. That's why I actually need to go, I need to go back home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to go back home to learn. I'm not learning from Mac G. Yeah. Uh, listen, man, I want to talk about um, music. Let's start with music, right? Yeah. Because uh, you released a couple of tracks last year that I fuck with, man. Yeah. Uh, first of all, Utataco Remix. Yeah. How did that come about, bro? Uh, wow, I actually don't know. Me and Younger did some records. Mm. We've been doing some records. Uh, uh, he came over and uh, he said, yo, I'm doing the Utataco Remix. I want you to jump on. And something about me, I love doing remixes. Mm. Um, you know, remixes for me, like... Uh, I've got certain like I've got a certain style of, of of music that I'm trying to produce and create, and I'm like constantly in the process of trying to create that stuff. So in the meantime, I like doing remixes, and uh, I could say shit that I don't want to say on the album that I'm working on. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So I was happy that you know he said, "Yo, jump on this remix." Sent in the verse, you know, a couple of days. And it was done. So do you choose like, because obviously you've got a relationship with Yanka, so you'll do the remix. What about other songs like maybe a song you heard and you don't have a relationship with the person? Everything is based on relationships. Ah. I, I, I kind of, I, without a relationship, we can't work. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It, like, there's no point for me in working without a relationship. You know? And wh why don't you guys collaborate more? When I say you guys like hip-hop cats, because I think for me, yeah. correct me if I'm wrong, I think there'll never be another remix like Aman Tombazan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, that was lit, dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the greatest remix probably of all time. Um, and only because we're able to sort of catch everybody while the, just before they're about to do this. You know, Questa, Nadia, Kid X. Uh, you know, Ginger we had Malum Kulka, Ginger Trill. Um, yo, DJ Dimples was, was on that remix. Mugs. Uh, yo, you know, it, it, everyone was just about to do this myself. So it was like a perfect sort of... Uh, 
Synergy. Synergy, where everyone just wanted to do something dope on that track. Mm. And it was like perfect timing. It was all new people. It wasn't like trying to get a remix and get an OG on it. It was like, we're the new kids. Let's come in and, and rock with them. So the synergies is perfect. And that also taught me like, do remixes with people that you actually have relationships. Everyone there we have relationships with. So why don't we see more of those remixes, bro? Well, I think um, there's probably two aspects, you know. I mean, for me personally, I've always been a like an insular uh, recording artist. I don't record. What is that? Like, I'm very insulated in oh. terms of the way I like to create my music. So I, I don't go to studios where there's 20 people. Ah, oh, okay. Or where there's 100 people. I don't, like, I, I, I can't get into the vibe mm. when there's a lot of people in the room. I can't, I can't record in those spaces, you know. So for me, it's like, you know, music collaborations always happen when people come here. Or I'm friends with them and they send me something on the email or WhatsApp and say, jump on. It'll happen that way. But I, I record my stuff mostly by myself. At that time, it was a lot of activity going on at, at the Motif Studios. So I also have to give credit to the Motif guys because they were bringing in artists like Ginger Trio to record, like Nadia to record. A lot of people were recording and doing collaborations with uh, with uh, with Dumi at the time, Stogie T now. Yeah. A lot of people were doing collaborations. So a lot of people were in and around that area. And we actually recorded the remix at that studio. Yeah. So it was like, sometimes when there's not natural energies, mm. you don't get the 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 the, the work done. Yeah. So I feel like maybe there's just a lack of people actually linking up. I think people see each other at shows and move around, but not everyone is really hanging that much. Do you think there's egos as a, as a part to play in it? Like everybody's got egos now, you know? Not really egos because I think everyone wants to get on nice tracks. Mm. Uh, everyone wants to get onto great tracks. Mm. Um, but like, let's say like, when if I have a track that I know is going to be a, a, a number bang. one smash yeah. and it's yeah. a banger, yeah. And I don't need anybody on it. I'm not going to call anybody <laughs> oh, on it. Oh, yeah. You, you want to keep it to yourself. Ever so, a lot of people are also keeping stuff to themselves, you know. And with the way the market is, we don't need to do… Well, we do need to do it. Uh, we need to have a lot of cross collaborations. You need to have a lot of uh, younger artists who are coming with a different market, mixing in with older guys like me, who have an older market and a different type of stamp. You need to have a lot of that, you know. In America, they've figured out a way how to you know, cross markets as much as possible to make the product, you know, as, uh, you know, as big as possible. Yeah. We haven't really got there yet because everyone has a similar, you know, target market yeah. right now, right in and here. And it's a small industry. And so. it's really small. Yeah. So a lot of people feel like, oh, I don't need anybody on this track. So they don't. Uh, on Utataku, you said, uh, Spandama coins, Spandama coins, Minau Arab. Yes. Yeah, how much are we worth right now? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Net worth. Yeah. A funny thing about net worth is like, like, for me, like, I always look at, like, the way I'm trying to look at money right now is, like, I always look at money like I have no money. Okay. You know? And I actually don't, actually. Because, like, <laughs> whatever comes in has to go back up. Yeah, 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 and yeah. And so, I've always looked at it like, oh, man, I actually, I actually ain't got no money. Mm. I actually got nothing because I'm always trying to What's no money to work. Uh, no money for me is, like, the... I can't, can't shop at Woolies. Yeah, no, no, Woolies, no. You, you, you should always... Your target, your goal for your life is to be able to always shop at Woolies when you feel like it. You don't have to, but when you feel like going to get that sandwich, or, yeah. you know what I'm saying, go get that juice, you know, the freshly squeezed. Yeah. You have to be able to go get it. That's like, should be a goal, right? Yeah. But I, I feel like, uh, uh, feeling like not having money is like not, uh, not being able to go shop every day, mm. not buying watches. Uh, not buying chains, mm. um, not going on 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 trips for fun all the time, mm. you know. Not because you're performing there. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Um, uh, th that's that's like that's not having money. Like we we don't you don't do things like it's not life is not leisure. Yeah. Like you know, not having money is like twenty four seven. You're trying to work on something. Yeah. Tell um, me about the the Remy uh, Remy Martin deal. Yes, yes. That must have been a huge bag, ne? Uh, I'm not quite sure. I'm mm. not quite sure because whatever bag it was, it goes into investing into cotton fest. But then how does that deal happen? Because you don't even drink, bro. Yeah, I don't really drink. I'm not like a, a, a crazy drinker. So I know how to celebrate, you know. Oh, but okay. we're not like, uh, I never drink unless it's like a celebration of something or a very important occasion, you know. Yeah. Um, it's like, yeah, it's like everyone else can do that, yeah. you know. We like to do the celebratory thing. 
or nothing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I remember last year I was, I was out in the free state. I think I think I had a gig. And then Scorpions, there's a Scorpions 2 that mm-hmm. came out. Yeah. yeah. So we were busy like previewing the album, listening to the album. And then Mtande, Mtande yeah, yeah, yeah. came on. I was like, nah, man, this is Ricky. And then I had to Google to make sure is this Ricky because okay. it sounded so dope. Yeah, though. yeah, yeah. Shout out to that. Nice was, music, yo, yeah. that was fucking dope. How did yeah. that song come about, bro? Um, well, like uh, you know, Paul is a good friend of mine. Yeah. Mass Music was a producer who was over there, is also a good friend, Kabza. So we linked up in uh we've been linking up in studio. Like I go to the studio a lot. It's just that I don't record a lot. Yeah. But when I do record, it's like it's like a once in a blue moon type thing. Yeah. So I recorded that part and then, you know, two weeks later. Like the beat changed fifteen times, You're kidding. and then that was the final beat. And Did you say you want to jump on song. it? It was a, it was like a different record. On uh, Mass was producing a record, and it was a different record. So I recorded those vocals on a different beat, and it was much slower. Mm. And then, like, fast forward like a couple couple weeks, body touched it. He called me like, "Yo, boy, I, I'm gonna change the beat for this one, and then <laughs> just check this out." And then he sent me that one, and it was like an amazing record. Yeah. But I was singing over a different beat, mm. which is like, which just shows how creative those guys can be. As long as they have vocals, they're able to do anything, which is crazy. When you, when you get in a space with uh, Pori and Gabza, like, do you feel like, wow, I'm witnessing magic here? Because as a consumer, when I listen to their music, I'm like, these guys are fucking crazy. Yeah. This is magic. I mean, for me, it's like, uh, I'm a fan, first and foremost. Like, I'm a fan of people. Um, I never try to get into people's space to force work with them. Right? So. Like, I'm happy being friends with people and not having to, like, jump on their wave, like, yeah. immediately. Yeah. So it's nice just to watch them and see what they do and how they're moving and support them as as friends, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So every time I'm around them, it's really on that vibe, just, like, watching the progression. And But I'm still taking in the stuff as a consumer, mm. not as a producer or a, an, a, an artist yeah. that's it, that goes to their space. Yeah. I'm, I'm taking in their stuff as a consumer, too. So every two weeks, I know that something is coming and I get surprised bit by bit just like everybody else. And do you lose your street cred when you do a I'm a piano song? Well, not really because I've been doing R&B. R&B? Yeah, I've been doing R&B like singing on, my, on joints for a long time. You know? yeah. I've been producing R&B beats. I've been like, for me, it's more about music. It's not really about just rap. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because like in SA, people like to box artists, you know? Yeah. Like if you're a rapper, you can only rap. Mm. Uh, which is weird because, like, overseas you get, like, ASAP do a track with Skrillex, you yeah, know? Yeah. And he's still respected in the hip-hop space. Yeah. Why, why do you think it's like that in SA, man? Well, that comes from... Maybe that can come from a place of uh, um, of envy. Mm. Uh, not really a place of, like, people trying to take away street cred based on your genre. I feel like everyone was always jealous of the guy who could kick the ball with the left foot, too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Everyone was jealous of the guy who could who could dribble with the left hand and the right hand. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So in music, it's the same thing. Like there's certain people who can dribble with the right hand and with the left, use both feet. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Play with one hand behind their back. You know, sometimes you just have to give props. And like Drake is someone who also broke that boundary yeah. internationally and he still gets shit for it. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. So I feel like locally, we we also try to box people into genres, which is cool, but like, the truly special people don't ever get boxed. Like, yeah, because you're not. You want to create, bro. Yeah, you want to create. You don't like. It doesn't matter what you're creating as long as you're creating something that you feel. You know. Do you so, think uh, a piano killed uh, hip hop last year? The um, I wouldn't say killed hip hop. Uh, I would say that it took the forefront definitely of all music in South Africa. I don't think anything can kill hip hop. Hip hop is a movement that you know. First of all, it's an underground movement, so it's not a. Uh, it's not a, 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 a movement that's meant to be commercial to a passive listener all the time. It'll have its phase where passive listeners jump on it and champion it because they feel like it's the end thing to do. Are you talking about me? Or oh, whoever, <laughs> I guess. But then it has the people that love hip-hop for hip-hop. Mm. And it doesn't matter whether it's the most popular genre or whether it's, you know, whatever it's doing. But, you know, one thing I'll tell you, all the hip-hop artists are, do, are doing pretty well for themselves. Um, what was your favorite uh, piano song last year? My favorite? Yeah. Uh, my favorite? Damn. I don't know if I have a favorite. Do I have a favorite? I don't know if I have a favorite. Mine is Tender Love, man. Oh. Yeah, Tender Love. Yeah, ten- I would say Tender Love is right up there. 
Um, that song, that's a classic for me, bro. I think like in 10 mm. years, we'll still be listening to that song. Yeah, most definitely. In 10 years, we're going to be listening to everybody, to everything. Mm. Like people look at music as if like, it's this thing that has to disappear, right? Yeah. Uh, there's certain ways that music gets killed and then you're just begging for it to disappear. Like if you hear it 15 times, 20 times on the radio, you'll go through a phase like, oh, I don't want to hear the song again. But true music lovers like keep their music collections yeah. and they remember everything that was there before. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And like, if you really love music, you should go buy that CD, keep it in your collection and, 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 and know that it's there. It's like your archive, you know? Yeah. Music should be also an archive of life. It what shouldn't you, just be like... Why do you think Pori doesn't get... Mapori, sorry. Doesn't get the, um, the respect it deserves, you know? Because like in the industry, we all worship Mapori. So like mm. we all um, see his genius. But normal people like don't seem to have him, you know? For lack of a better word. Well, definitely now. I think definitely now he's starting to get the respect and props that he deserves. If you look at everything, not just the, the, how, how the music is penetrating but how much he's building uh, his social media and interactions. You know, people are watching him closely, if not more than anybody in the country right now. Yeah. So I think right now he's getting his flowers. But at the same time, it's like, you know, like, <laughs> like who's going to pat you in the back, bro? Like, yeah. you know, nobody's going to pat you in the back for anything that you do. Yeah, true. You know, true, true. you're lucky, you know. Mm. There's no red carpets in life generally. So the more people realize that, like, the harder they work. And I think he's always realized... The more I don't get pats on the back, the harder I'm, I'm going to keep working anyway. Yeah. So, you know. So maybe it's I, a good thing. I, maybe it's a good thing that he, he, he you know, he doesn't get his, his, his extreme props. And what is props anyway? Like, is it awards? Is it endorsements? What, like, what is it? Is it doing gigs? Because I would much rather be doing uh, 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 50 gigs in a month, you know, doing five gigs and getting paid my full rate than being on a cover of a magazine. You mm, know what I'm saying? Yeah. I would, I, if I was, if, if in his situation, you know, that they've been in, I would rather have all the hits that the country produced than, you know, you know, be on a TV commercial. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So for him, he's in a great position for himself. Uh, Costa Stitch, that's his name. Costa right? Titch. Costa Titch. Uh, and Galagat. Yeah. Dope, dope verse on that one. Yeah. Man. How did that come about? Did he hit you up for that? Yeah, yeah, I always wanted, I always wanted to jump on a song with him because, like, every time I saw him, he used to come with like crazy energy, performing. And then when he came with the Galagata song, I was like, this is gonna be the right record. Like, it's gonna be the right record for him. So me doing the remix was really just to shed light on the original version. Yeah. And then and Keenan jumped on too. So I was like, yo, let's jump on this. Let's make it crazy. Uh, speaking about Keenan, what happened to an enemy of my friend is my enemy as well. Who said that? <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> You can't pull out this <laughs> your vendor proverbs. <laughs> I told you enough now. <laughs> Which <laughs> who said that? Uh, what do you think about AK and Zutle breaking up? Oh, they broke up. Yeah, oh, I, I think even, it's confirmed now. Oh, I didn't even know that. I didn't even know that. But. There was a there was a video surfacing last week of him um, and someone kissing at Rockets. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, oh, I didn't even know about that. Yeah, but what, what do you think? I don't think any anything. I think everybody deals with their relationships in a private space. Yeah, you know, I deal with my relationship in a private space, and I'd like to afford everybody the same. What um, what advice would you give to like guys in the industry about dating a woman? Because you've been with your woman for a very long time. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it's not easy, man. I've never dated an industry woman, so I wouldn't know. Uh. So I feel like a lot of people uh, are trying to. Uh, uh, um, you know, get get on uh, dating industry people because obviously that's what you see on TV, yeah. which is cool. You know, I, I wish everybody the best. I hope everybody the best. Everyone deserves happiness, man. Yeah. So whether it's industry or not industry, whatever, but you know, just know yourself yeah. and don't forget that you're here to grind. You're here to grind and complete your mission too. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about you and I. Mm -hmm. uh, me and my woman, we love that track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm only singing it to her. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Ah, because it's dope, man. Yeah. I can relate. Dope, yeah. <laughs> Was it a conscious decision to have your family in the video? Yeah, like, I think it's the second time we used the family in the video. So, I think I want to use more and more family. I've never, I, I don't like using actors. And like, if I'm talking about something that's like close to my heart or something, I feel like it's, it's a real story for me. I don't like having actors. In the music videos, you know? Yeah. And I've had actors sometimes in my music videos, it just doesn't feel authentic. Mm. Even in videos where, like, it's a party and it's, like, not really your people. <laughs> it feels weird, like... People and start action. <laughs> yeah, like, life starts feeling like you're using props, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I don't want to use props in my music videos ever. Yeah. So whether the story is, like, 
close to my heart or whether it's something, you know, a bit removed, I'd like to use to people that are, that are really around me. What's the story about you and I? So if I'm correct, because the video explains it a lot. Mm-hmm. You're talking about how you're out there, but you're not taking care of home. Right? Yeah. Something along those lines. Well, it's about, it's about trying to be as present as possible. It's about really trying to be as present as possible. Yeah. Um, at the end of the day, like, you know, when you choose this life and when you go down this path, unfortunately, your priority has to be your career. Yeah. And what you're doing outside to advance your career and to advance your moves or, you know, people talk about your streets, your presence and your relevance. So much of that can consume you as an artist, you know. And when you have a family, it's different, you know. It's different. Some, life has to be different when you have a family. Yeah. And that takes time to develop, you know. It doesn't happen in the first year, you know. It takes time to develop. And that song is really about that. It's like acknowledging the path that it had to be. You know what I'm saying? How did you meet your woman? Uh, I don't know. Like, how did we meet? Like, everybody else, like, yo, what's up? How are you doing? <laughs> I'll take my number, let's hey, For real, just okay. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm pretty good. Like, you know, I'm a pretty boy. You know, I've been doing this thing. <laughs> I know how to nap him. I know how to nap him. <laughs> it's, not, it's not, you know, you know what I'm saying? It's just another day. Yeah, I know, I, I, know how to, I know how to bring him in. You yeah. know what I'm saying? No, but seriously, what, what do you, don't you remember the first time you met her? I do remember. Where was it? But I'm, I'm not going to, like, explain the whole story. No, it, was, it wasn't. It wasn't Santin. Santin. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't Santin. Are you like, Ricky Rick at this time, or are you just under? Um, are you a SoundCloud rapper or something? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would say I was becoming Ricky Rick. Okay, becoming Ricky. So I've always been Ricky Rick. You have to understand. After I left school, yeah, I've always been Ricky Rick. Like Les, they were, when Les and them gave me the name, Les gave me the name. The alias. The alias. You yeah. know, first it, I used to be pretty Ricky around the streets in Joburg when I came from from school. And I came to Joburg back, I became Pretty Ricky. And the streets knew me as Pretty Ricky. Yeah. And then after a while, I developed into Ricky Rick. Yeah. But I was always that character in the streets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, not necessarily on TV and everywhere else, but I've always been Ricky Rick on the streets. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's hard to answer that question. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You'd have to ask Bianca if she knew who I was. But it didn't matter because, you know, once I laid a game down, you yeah. know, it's over after that. I know how to ring him in. I'm telling you, <laughs> And then when do you decide, all right, cool, this is going to be my wife, man. This is going to be my baby mom, man. I want to spend the rest of my life with her. Probably from that moment. For real? Yeah, from that moment. You just knew? Yeah, from that moment, yeah. Wow. You know. Yeah. You always know. Yeah, yeah. And how long you guys been together? Oh, you always know who, who, you, wanna, who you want to have your children. Mm. Uh, for, well, for me, you know, you, I was always looking for, you know, you're looking for the love and you're looking for, you know, a relationship, a great friendship. You're looking for how far can the journey go? You're always calculating all those things. Mm. But first and foremost, when you see someone, I always had the, the thought like, can I raise children with this person? That's always something in the back of my mind. Always something in the back of my mind. And lucky enough, you know, I end up in the situation that I'm in off of that intuition. Yeah, yeah. You know, can we raise a family? Can we, can we go through this process together? And the answer was yes. And how long you guys been together for? Now it's been... It's going to seven years. Damn, dog. That should go through your phone, bro. No, I don't think so. Hey, mine goes through my phone. I'm trying to stop her, man. <laughs> what's on your phone? Uh, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Depends what's on your phone. Like, <laughs> I don't know why you're thinking about it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Depends what's on your phone. Have you ever thought about cheating on your wife, though? In those seven years? Uh, I don't think so. It's not like... That's not the thought that comes across your head. Like, but dog, you're you, a rapper, you try, dog. You're trying to stay focused on... You're trying to stay focused on the goal of building a family. But I mean, you're a rapper, dog. You get so much temptations every weekend when you're performing. You don't get but, tempted? But like I say, it's like... Ricky Rick doesn't make me who I am. Like, I've been sl- Slick Rick way before. I've yeah. been Ricky Rick way before. Yeah. So, it's like... It's not, I'm not new to attention. If so, you know what I'm saying. you've never cheated on your wife in seven years? Nah. You're kidding? No nah. ways, bro. Nah, you can do it for me if you want. Go, <laughs> you can go cheat on your girl if you want. Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. All right, let's talk about Pepper. The song you did with Pepper, what yeah. it is. Yeah. I think that song was huge in December. And it was mm-hmm. it was big. One of the big songs. Mm-hmm. Right? Uh, how did that come about? Another situation where he's here. Uh, another situation. Pepper brought the beats. He brought the track over. and said, let's operate. And we're like, yo, let's do it. Lucas Raps was already on the hook. Mm. So we're like, yo, we need like a, a Cassie vibe inside this beat. And then we jumped on it. 
Yeah, and what I like about you, man, you always seem to uh, bridge the gap between um, the the new cats and and like you're one of those um, artists that bridges the gap between the old guys and the new guys, mm. you know, um, without even making it look hard, you mm. know. Like for example, Tira, you can see, oh, okay, cool, he's trying to be relevant, but with you, it's like seamless, you know. I don't think Tira's trying to be relevant. I think you know. This is my opinion. Not really. I mean, you know, I don't. You can't say. We can't say somebody who's who started putting Durban music in the forefront. Like we know Tira as the person who brought Durban House to the forefront. Yeah, yeah. Before it even came to the forefront, you know, you're talking about Skybar. Uh, you know, you're talking about underground parties that were run by these guys. You know, and once you have a, an understanding of what the culture needs to progress. It's just your job. It becomes your job to push whatever's new next mm. and push it in, and, oh, and put it right I in front see. of people. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not looking for relevance. I don't think, I don't think relevance is, is what makes people special yeah. at all. Yeah. And if you're chasing relevance, you definitely won't be around for 10 years, yeah. 15 years. What you do you know? think about the new wave? New wave is amazing. The new wave is amazing. You know, young artists doing their thing, doing the music that they enjoy, the music that they like. It's amazing. Uh, what do you think we should look out for in 2020? 2020... Damn. I'm, I'm, I think I'm going to say people look out for, man, look out for albums. I think like, I'm interested to hear what um, Costa's project's going to sound like. I want to hear a project from, from Willie Cardiac. I want to hear a project from uh, 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 Frank, Frank Asino. Oh, yeah, he's good. Man. Um, I want to hear a project from, who was I listening to the other, the other day? I think he like. I want to hear the project from Una Rams. Una Rams, huh? Uh, Another vendor. I want to hear Jay Marley's project. Those are the projects I want to hear. Yeah. Those are the projects I want to hear. And would you be open to working with any of those guys? Yeah, 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 yeah. Constantly. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. No, I hear you, man. How does one go independent? Is it always better as a starting? Independent? You... Yeah. Uh, not everyone can go independent. Because some people are just meant to be soldiers, you know? Some people are born to be soldiers at the end of the day. Yeah. So like, if you're a soldier and you've got the blood of a soldier, mm. you know, sometimes it can be hard to to try adjust to being a boss and to taking risk, you know. It's not easy. It's not easy. So some in those situations, it's nice to get signed by someone who wants to take care of you and, and that you guys have a nice understanding and nice workflow that works for some people. Um, but in an, if you come from an environment where you're an entrepreneur and you're a hustler and you're a pusher, and you're always destined to hustle something. Yeah. You, you, that's when you definitely need to be independent. You need to be independent if you have that drive to be a hustler. Would you say you are an opportunist or a purist? Now, the reason why I say that, right? When I look at you, I see like, all right, cool. You like this, uh, the lifestyle, you know, like nice cars, nice watches, as you were saying and whatever. And then rapping was just like a tool that you saw. Okay, cool. I could make money. I can rap. You know, mm -hmm. I look good. I can be a good brand. And then you just happen to ride on that. Or are you like a purist where like you can't live without rapping type of vibe? I think, uh, you know, mm, for me, it, it's never been about like uh, actually rapping. Because I, I actually started rapping based on, on, on producing. So I wanted to rap. Then I wanted to produce. And I was producing and no one would buy the beats. So <laughs> yeah. I started rapping on the beats. Were they puff? <laughs> I think they were dope beats. Like, yeah. you know, yeah. at least from all the, all the songs from my first album, all of those albums, all of those beats I was trying to pitch to other people. My first album, I was trying to pitch all those songs to other people, mm. including Amento Mazan. Mm. So, so I guess, you know, maybe people just didn't see it the way I saw it. But um, for me, it's never been about like any specific trade. It's just been about like the acquisition of talent uh, like getting different talents the way, you know, the, the further we go into life, getting different talents and, and learning different things and learning different ways to do things. That's the most important thing for me, first and foremost, because I know how to make music. Mm. You know, I know how to make music that people will like. Yes, you know, yes. Because I've done that before. And now my process is now trying to learn how to put out mu the music that I like by mm. myself. Mm. That's just for me. Mm. That's my next, like, that's the next talent that I'm digging for, for myself. Yeah. And then you learn how to try run businesses and then you learn how to try throw events and then you learn how to try make merch 
And then you learn all those things as you go. And then you don't know where they're going to take you. Yeah. But music is the first example for me that something can be done even when people are telling you that you're not good at it or you can't People tell you you're not good at it, bro. Yeah, no, 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 wouldn't say not good at it, but if people don't want to rap on your beats, ah. it, it's like maybe they're not good enough at the time. So you got to go back and figure out how to make them good enough. And which hat do you prefer wearing? The, the business hat or the, the rapping hat? I feel like they need to intertwine. They need to go back and forth. Yeah. Back and forth, definitely. Yeah. I wouldn't be happy just doing one. Yeah. I was interviewing uh, Zuchi Coke Dope the other day. Yeah. And um, he spoke about, you know, suffering from anxiety and depression. Mm -hmm. um, have you ever been through that as well? Yeah. Definitely. Fly. Yeah, definitely. What? When was this? Well, it's not like a... It's, a, <laughs> it's not like a... a, a you know, people treat anxiety and depression like AIDS, you know. Mm. When we first heard about AIDS, like, oh, it's uh, some, you know, you know, you get close to it, you're going to die. Mm. You're close to it all the time, you know. If you look around at your family and your friends, you're always around, you're always around people that suffer from some fo form of uh, uh, depression or anxiety about whatever. Mm. You know, everyone's going through something, you know. Most people, at least, at least that I know. So for me, it's not something that's foreign at all. Yeah, what, what triggers it for you? What triggers it? Mm. It's not like a. It's not like a switch. Mm. It's just like a. Uh, it's like a, a constant like state of mind that you need to sort of learn how to work around. So when you're in that state of mind, what do you do like to to get over it? What do I do? Mm. I just try to live as natural life as possible. Try to do the things I want to do. Try not put myself in positions where I'm doing things I don't want to do. Mm. Um, that helps. Ah, I hear you, man. Um. Yeah, so let's talk about the business, your, 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 your business side, yeah? Mm -hmm. um, most entrepreneurs say they wish they started in earlier. Mm. Uh, do you, would you say that's true with you as well? Yeah, everybody should start early. Yeah. With everything, like, everybody should start early. Like, we, we put so much focus on school and all that, but everybody should start early. What businesses are you in? I know you got the, the, the barber thing. Mm -hmm. uh, you got merch. Mm -hmm. uh, you're doing Cotton Fest as, as well. What, mm -hmm. what else are you involved in? Um, so, yeah. It's, it's basically four things. It's uh, events, like I'm going to put it in segments. Events, seg events, retail, uh, music, and entertainment. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Yeah. So any, have... anything that has to do with any of those four, we can do. And you're not in like property and stuff because I know like a lot of people like to venture into and that. I don't know anything about property. So I wouldn't be able to <laughs> even like, looks dope. But... <laughs> I don't know anything about property. Yeah. One thing I do know is that you, for, for you to be involved in property like anything else, you really have to have the passion for it. Yeah, You can't yeah. just jump in like I'm doing an investment. It doesn't work that way. You really have to, to have the passion of really working it. One thing that I see you very passionate about is fashion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And your fashion, I, like I know nothing about fashion. Yeah, But when I look at you, I'm like, wow, that's dope. Like it's very abstract. Um, where does that come from? Uh, again, like just the willingness to try different things. The willingness just to do something different and to explore, you know what I'm saying? Not get stuck in a box, always trying to explore. And which better way can you express yourself than in fashion, you know what I'm saying? Fashion is always constantly changing, always new things are coming in and out. So it's a, it's a beautiful way to try to explore yourself, to know what your boundaries are. Because I see you in the same light as like uh, Pharrell, uh, Jaden Smith, those type of guys. Oh, maybe not that deep, but yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Who do you draw inspiration from though? Uh, not from anyone, just from people around you, I guess. Yeah. People around me, people that I meet, uh, traveling, going to different parts of the world. Uh, that's where you get most inspiration from, definitely. How was it meeting uh, Tommy Hilfiger? No, that was dope. Yeah, that was really dope. Yeah. That was really dope. Yeah, Tommy's a god, so he's an icon by himself. So he's How did that crazy. even happen, bro? Um, yeah, we just did the plug up. Uh, Tommy Hilfiger wanted me to come out to Milan. Came out to Milan. So they reached out to the you? Show. Yeah, they reached out to us. Wanted us to check out their fashion show, so we went there. And then in the process, we got the opportunity to meet Tommy himself. That's crazy, dude. How do you end up being on Tommy's uh, radar? I, th I guess social media, man. I guess social media. People see what you're doing on social media and, and, and they reach out. I, I guess that's the way it is. But also being around, like you have to be in Paris, you have to be in Milan. And that's how you sort of get on the radio with these people. And was it to collaborate or work together or was it just... No, nah, not really. I don't think I don't I don't think we're gonna do a collaboration, but it was really just for just to check out their what they're doing next and where they're taking the brand next. Ah, I yeah. see. 
And then Boys and Bucks, was that a fashion label? What is happening there? Boys and Bucks was a crew. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was a crew. Yeah. That was a crew. Crew. What happened to Boys and Bucks? Um, I think everything has its time. It had its time. Mm. And then sort of uh, everybody moved on to do their own thing and, and, and chase success in different places. And uh, yeah, everything has its time span, man. Yeah. Yeah. All right, cool. We're going to play a game now. Ne? Uh-huh. Uh, it's called One Must Go. Mm-hmm. So you got to choose. I'm going to give you a couple of options and you must choose which one must go. Uh, Days TV or Netflix? One Must Go? Yeah. Right now? Yeah. Probably Netflix. Netflix? Yeah. No ways, right? I mean, there's no... Netflix is nice, but like, you know, it's like, you don't need that much Netflix in your life. <laughs> you know? I could download that shit <laughs> from Pirate Bay. You know what I'm yeah, saying? yeah, yeah. So you don't need Netflix, but this TV you need to watch your sport. You got to check the news. You got to do all those things. Yeah. What 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 did you watch last on Netflix? Uh, the Aaron Hernandez story. Oh, I don't know that one. Yeah, yeah. Check What's out that the, check out the Aaron Hernandez story. He was an NFL player okay. for the Patriots, mm-hmm. and uh, he went to jail for 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 murder and a few murders and stuff like that. That's crazy. But check it out. Check it out. Shit, man. Um, Kabza or Mapurisa? Uh, probably both. Both must go. Both must go. Eh. Uh, I don't think any should go. I don't think any of them are going anywhere. But if, if you had to choose one? I wouldn't choose any, man. I, would, I, I wouldn't choose any. Like, I'm not the type of guy. Like, I'm not even going to choose. Those are both my friends. Good guys. Yeah. Probably nobody must go. Okay, cool. Uh, Gucci versus Prada. Mm, right about now, like, Gucci forever because Gucci's got like a... Uh, um, the brand means so much and that logo means so much from a lifestyle perspective, you know. The logo means to me lifestyle. It's bigger than fashion. But fashion-wise right now, Prada, definitely. So probably Gucci needs to go right now. Gucci needs to go. Yeah. What is it about Gucci and all these labels that you guys love so much? I don't get it, man. I, I don't think I can explain it to you if you don't get it. Nah. <laughs> if, you, if you don't get it, I'd rather not talk to you about it. <laughs> Hey, it baffles me, bro. What is it? If you don't get it, I'd rather not try to explain the shit. <laughs> uh, okay, cool. I don't want to explain that shit. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, traditional media versus the internet. Um, One must go. It's a tough one. In this country, in this country, traditional media is still in the forefront. Um, so... If you if you told that to go, it would be tough for a lot of people. Um, and I still feel like everything that's happening on the internet is the new traditional media. You feel what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. it's tough. But it's traditional media it's showing tough. you love that they still bump your tunes, ne? Well, it's, it's not about me. Mm-hmm. I, I couldn't care less if anybody bumped my tunes. Like, you know, it's not about me. It's about like developing content and taking content to a next level. For everybody. Yeah. It's about developing the whole country, the whole continent. So that development still needs to happen. You know, you can't leave everything to Netflix. Netflix doesn't belong to us. YouTube doesn't belong to us, you know. So we can't glorify those those platforms that we haven't built. So we still we still have to build our own platforms on the internet for me to say that, tradi- that the internet has to stay more than traditional media. Yeah. But I feel like trad- traditional media, we can still build our own radio stations we can still build our own TV networks. We can still build all those things. Yeah. So I feel like that infrastructure is something that is going to also allow everyone who's figuring out what to do on the internet to create something even huger. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. that's how I look at it. Would you be open to open like your own Netflix or like a cotton tube? Um, or your, your, your head space is not there? Yeah, if I was passionate about it, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. But there's so many people doing great content right now. It's nice to, to see them doing their thing. All right, Mabala noise or motif? One must go. One must go. Yo, you like taking me back. <laughs> you like taking me back. Um, like you see, like these type of games and stuff. Like I'm not the type of person to like you know give you a soundbite, but like those two sections of my life were very important sections of my life. So, in, in terms of my life, I wouldn't make anything go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I wouldn't make anything go. Right, I don't cool. regret any any of those pieces of the journey. You know. All right. It was a beautiful time. Um, Nasty CEO, hey, Reese, one must go. I don't think any of them, again, I don't think any of them are going anywhere. Ah, you gotta on. find another game, man. <laughs> like, I'm not even that type of guy. Like, I don't think any of them are going anywhere. Yeah, you know, yeah. Nasty's in 
in uh, Beverly Hills doing big things right about now. Mm. Aries just dropped a new single last week. So I'm watching what both of them are doing. If any of them go, it's like, it's a it, problem for me. Yeah. Because I got to I gotta see what they're doing. I got to enjoy what they're doing. Your top five rappers of all time in SA. In SA? Yeah. Mm, top five rappers of all time in SA. Yeah. Uh, it would have to be WHP, uh, Pro Kid. Um, man, Pitch Black for me was like, Pitch was Black. crazy. Yeah. Wow. I, I love what Pitch Black came, came into the game with. Um, man, you see, like, I don't know what people consider as rappers mm. because even guys like for me, like the Guaito Cats, for me, I consider them as rappers, like TKZ, when, like, not even TKZ, but TKZ in, in the Guaito sense. But in a like, my Papuzzi made me want to rap, mm. my, my Papuzzi made me want to be an artist because I felt like his style was very much rap, yeah, the way his delivery and with the way he would do his verses was very much rap. So, like, my papuzzi was, like, you know, a rapper to me. Mm. And even when I see him today, he's always telling us, like, let's do some tracks. Yeah. I'm sure I could get him on a hip-hop track. Um, Isn't it crazy when you meet yeah. him the first time? Because he's a guy you idolized. You yeah, know? it's crazy. But Pops, like, if, if you know Pops, it's like, he's such a uh, down-to-earth guy. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like, you know, a lot of the guys, you, you know, have that star thing about yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pops yeah. doesn't have that, you know? So, so I would say, yeah, uh, you know, Double HP... Nah, Pitch Black made made me want to do. I'm talking about people that made me want to do stuff. Yeah, I'm not talking about technically like people that made me want to rap and, mm. and put out music was like Double HP, uh, 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 Pro Kid. Uh, when Pitch Black came out, I was like, damn, I gotta get in the studio and do something. Mm. Um, um, my Papuzzi made me want to maybe want to come with a certain energy of my rhymes, and uh, and then pretty much maybe Delez, Delez, Delez really motivated me to actually you know, chase what I was chasing yeah. as a rapper. Yeah, yeah. So those are the people that made me want to do stuff. Uh, oh, when you meet Deleuze, that's a, this is around the same time you meet Bongani Fasi, eh? No, nah, I've known Deleuze since I was a kid. Oh, I've known Deleuze since, yeah, since Standard 1. Wow. Yeah, I've known him since Standard 1. Oh, you guys one. went to the same school? Yeah, went to the same school. Oh, that's dope. Standard I didn't hear that, bro. Yeah, Standard 1. Um, I remember um, I was um, at Questa's gig. You know the one in the East End? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and you're performing. And it was the first time I saw that thing that you do when you say, let's go to the left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go to the right. Yeah. Dude, the crowd went crazy. I literally had goosebumps. Bro. Yeah. It was yeah. crazy. The energy was amazing. Yeah, it was lit. Lit. I think for me, you're one of the best performers in the country right now. Um, I always get humbled when people say that. It's always nice, you know. Yeah. But I, like, I just try to get on stage and just try to take out as much energy as possible. How did you even come up with that? With that let's go to the left. Let's go to the right thing. Um, oh, I don't remember. I don't remember. It was, but it was a spur of the moment. I don't remember. Yeah. But it was spur of the moment, definitely. Yeah. And then at what time now do, you, when do you decide? Okay, it's time to change the set, like your 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 performance set. Uh, well, now we're integrating bands. So. Oh, nice. So now with the band, it's like it's another. We're taking it somewhere else, and then we're able to perform. It depends, like, you know, it depends how many times you've been around certain places, you know. Mm. But I think the most important thing for me is just developing into, like, adding music in, in a way that I'm able to perform the, perform the new music that I'm about to do. Yeah. So that's the development that I want to do in terms of a set. Yeah. But most times, like, sets is like, especially for performing artists, like, you know, when you go on tour, like, uh, like when you go on tour, it's usually the same. It's usually the same set. Yeah. It's just that in South Africa, we've got the privilege of being able to see an artist the whole month or whatever. You yeah, know what I'm yeah. saying? So, I feel like once you create a set, it can be the set, you know, I, I can tell you that Beyonce has got the same set every concert she does for the past two years. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, until they decide they're doing another movement or a new album comes in, then they switch things up again. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. Getting into that zone where it's like, how do you elevate the musical experience and then how do you plan for the new music that you're about to drop? Yeah. That's going to make it make sense visually and sonically. Yeah. yeah. I'm of the belief when you're an artist, um, you're bound to be addicted to, to something. You know, you get people that are addicted to alcohol, some people sex, mm-hmm. uh, some people weed. Well, what's your poison? Um, what's my poison? I don't know what my poison is now. Probably... Probably YouTube is my poison. Like, I'll be watching ESPN too much. For real? Yeah, like... <laughs> I always got to keep updated what's happening with sports. So 
Yeah. Like without knowing what's happening in sports, like I lose my brain. Yeah. So that's probably like you don't smoke my weed. number one addiction. That's like my number one addiction is uh is like checking out ESPN and all that stuff. You smoke weed though. I try to live as clean as possible, man. You know me. You see me. I'm Damn. with the water. I live a natural life as possible. You're like a saint, bro. <laughs> you could have been a priest. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> All right, cool. And then uh, what would you tell a 20-year-old Ricky? Mm-hmm. Yeah, looking back at your career and where you are now. Um, a 20-year-old? Yeah. I wouldn't tell a 20-year-old anything. I will just tell him to go for it. Yeah. Go, like, continue... Continue trusting your gut. Continue trusting your instinct. Um, and go for it, man. Yeah. Still continue to go for it. Don't play it safe. Yeah. That's what I would say. Yeah. And you've never played it safe in your career, no? Hardly. But I do play it safe. Everything is calculated, but uh, there's some risk involved always. Are you one of those people that has like a five, ten year plan? Mm, no. I got like a six month plan. <laughs> <laughs> that's, how, that's how I stay as stress free as possible. Yeah. Uh, there's a chill of mine who want, uh, they sent a question. They said, I must ask you, what happened to you being a gospel rapper? What Apparently, happened to Yeah, you being a gospel rapper. Apparently, you were in some DVD back in 08, 09, mm-hmm. when you were at After, and you were rapping gospel or something like that. I don't know about being a gospel rapper. Yeah. I've definitely always had, talked about God and had songs that have specifically talked about God. Do you remember the then. DVD? I remember. Well, yeah, that DVD, there was 28 tracks on that DVD. But I remember the one track that talked about God. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know if I could say I was a gospel rapper, but yeah. definitely talking about God in, in my music was something that I used to do as part of my exploration of what things I wanted to talk about, definitely. Are you religious? I wouldn't say religious, but definitely always on a journey looking for what's happening. So you're more uh, spiritually inclined? I, I wouldn't even, you know, to call myself spiritual, you know, would be a bit, you know. What would you call yourself? Then? Like, uh, definitely on a journey. Mm-hmm. Definitely on a journey. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What definitely journey is on the that? journey. On the journey of seeking, like, what's important, what's important in life, you know? Yeah. And what angle you need to look at it from, what lenses you have to have on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ah, that's profound, man. Uh, and then, yeah, let's talk about Cotton Fest, dog. Yeah. Yeah, it's my first time mm-hmm. uh, going to Cotton Fest. And, jeez, um, the lineup is crazy. Mm. I think if you're an artist or a DJ, you're not on that lineup. There's something you're doing wrong. Because everybody's on it. Not really everybody. I mean, you know, you you could easily have 200 artists there if it's everybody. But it's really like you're trying to, you know, swap people around, move people around, have different people coming in and out. So yeah. that's the process that, we, for we, that, me, that, that we go by. No problem. <laughs> pleasure. <laughs> My pleasure. <laughs> How did it come about, the Cotton Fest? Was it just uh, another extension of, of the brand? Well, we just wanted, like, uh, you know, when you perform... 100 or you know, 150 shows a year, you sort of ch- start getting an understanding of what type of shows you like performing at um, and what type of shows you like to see happen. And Confess was a step towards um, creating a show that you want to perform at, that people want to perform at, that want to vibe at. Um, get based on my experience of performing at every show, you know. So it's like taking the best from every show, removing the worst from every show experience that I've had and putting it into Confess and then trying to share that with my peers and try to share that with the kids on the ground. Yeah. Yeah. And what's uh, what's in store this year? Because it looks huge, eh? Yeah, this year is going to be crazy. We've got three stages. Mm. So it's like, uh, it's going to be like a musical blast for everybody. Like, that loves music is going to have a, a brilliant time. And uh, we've made the venue bigger so there's more space for people to move around. It's going to be like a nice little village of us just having good fun, listening to great music, eating good food. You know, checking out dope activations, checking out dope fashion. It's going to be crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember before recording, I was telling you that, you know, a lot of events are, are seeing flames. But mm. you, you said you pulled 5,000 last year, ne? Mm-hmm. So this year, how many are we expecting? Uh, this year, we'll see what we do. But uh, we're going to we're gonna cap it at like 8,000 just to oh, keep wow. it like intimate. That's and, big. Uh, in, in, in and if we day, have to go probably. further, we'll go further. But it's nice to have a nice 8,000 people that you know are there for Cotton Fest. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Um, you don't need it any bigger than that. Like like I said, we come from an underground movement and it's mm. nice sometimes to also keep it a bit underground. Yeah. But 8,000 doesn't seem underground, but I know there's a lot of kids out there that have been looking for this experience that haven't found it anywhere else. Yeah. So it's like, we got to give it to them and try get bigger and better as we go. And any plans to take it national? Uh, you know, we're always, we're always look, looking at options of what we can do. 
But uh, for now, we're just trying to get it right in Joburg before we move it anywhere else. Yeah. yeah. So the merch, is it just your merch or like, do you have other vendors selling merch as well? Uh, we're going to have a Cotton Fest merch store. So it's Cotton Fest merch store. Just, just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I got to cup that. Dog. Yeah, I definitely. love your merch, bro. Your merch is Yeah, it's dope. amazing. Thank you, man. Thank yo, you. Man. Yo, yo, it's yo. amazing how it's built, so. Yeah. It's amazing. All right, Ricky. Ricky, thank you so much, thank man. You. It's thank you. Thank you. It's been great. Thank you. Blessings. Um, and then what I like about you, man, is 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 um, you're a family man, you know, mm. first and foremost. And um, that's a testament of a true man, you know. Mm-hmm. I like that about you. And yeah, man. Long thank you, continue, man. Continue, bro. Thank you, thank you, and thank hopefully you. Hopefully, you don't cheat on your wife anytime soon. Blessings. <laughs> you can do everything. You do everything. You, can, I can live through you. <laughs> you do everything. I will live through you. I will watch it pan out for, on my behalf. Go yeah. ahead. And in closing, twenty twenty, dropping anything? Now uh, we'll see. Like I said, I'm working on a new sound, and like I'm always kind of see work on new sounds. So let's see what happens. Yeah. yeah. Ricky Rig out of the building. Boo. Podcast and chill. Matt G, the ghost lady, and Lynn Moleko.